The Nintendo Entertainment System played host to the first games in many of gaming's greatest franchises. Mario, Zelda, Metroid, these are landmarks in gaming history that are still around today. But they're also all Nintendo franchises. And if we're talking about series that originated on the NES that are not developed by Nintendo, there's really only one king. Castlevania. Konami's gothic horror series is one of the most iconic franchises in video game history. With games released across four decades, Castlevania has both pioneered new genres and embraced the style of new generations, while remaining focused on killing Dracula again and again. It's also asked important questions such as... What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! So today on Game Files, we're going to explore the history of Castlevania. And to do that, we've got to go back to where it all began. Castlevania made its Japanese debut in 1986 for the Famicom disc. Developers at Konami were inspired by classic horror films like Nosferatu and Frankenstein and wanted to capture that feeling in an action platformer. The game featured Simon Belmont journeying to Dracula's castle to kill its titular ruler. He used the whip as his main weapon, along with a number of tools like holy water and throwing axes to fight against legions of monsters. Castlevania proved popular in Japan, and so it was released for the NES in North America a year later. It was part of the unofficial second wave of NES games to hit the region, and it was one of the biggest platformers. Those two factors contributed to great sales, and thus, a franchise was born. And there were a lot of sequels released over the next decade, most of which followed a similar pattern. Dracula's Curse, Belmont's Revenge, Super Castlevania IV, Rondo of Blood, Bloodlines, all were side-scrolling platformers featuring a member of the Belmont family fighting the forces of evil. Castlevania had a successful shtick and it stuck to it, with one exception. The very first Castlevania sequel, Simon's Quest, is not a standard platformer. It features a non-linear world that players can explore in any order, a day-night cycle, and a merchant to buy things. In a sense, like Metroid. It's got a lot of problems, but at the time, these things were new and fresh. And though the games that followed took more inspiration from the original Castlevania, Simon's Quest was a preview for what the series would eventually become. In the mid-90s, Konami was interested in taking Castlevania in a new direction. Developers took inspiration from Simon's Quest by creating an explorable open world with role-playing elements. This new game would be called Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and no one expected that it would create an entirely new genre. Released for the PlayStation in 1997, Symphony of the Night sold poorly at first. Those who played it couldn't stop talking about the game's great exploration, deep combat system, and the beauty of its 2D graphics. The majority of Castlevania games after Symphony of the Night follow this style of gameplay. They also all happen to have extremely similar names. Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Dissonance, Aria of Sorrow, Dawn of Sorrow. After a while, the names start to feel like parodies. Despite the awkward titles, Castlevania continued to be a success for Konami, all the way through the 2000s. But Konami also didn't restrict itself to making games in the style of Symphony of the Night. More powerful consoles meant better 3D graphics, and Konami aimed to take advantage of that, to mixed success. Castlevania 64 was the first 3D Castlevania game, and let's just say the controls are really bad before we move on to more noteworthy titles. 2003's Lament of Innocence featured gameplay similar to Devil May Cry, without any of the charisma and charm of that game. Yet the most notable 3D Castlevanias are the reboots. In 2010, Konami decided to reboot the franchise with Lords of Shadow. It's an action-adventure game that boasted impressive graphics, complex combat, and plenty of environmental puzzles. It was warmly received by fans, even if it didn't keep many of the elements that made Castlevania famous. Lords of Shadow even got two sequels a few years later. And if you're wondering what came next for Castlevania, the answer is nothing. Unfortunately for Castlevania fans, Konami decided in the mid-2010s to stop focusing on AAA game development and instead focus on mobile games. 
since 2014, the only new Castlevania games have been a mobile game and re-releases of old titles. Not that everything has been bad for Castlevania. An animated Netflix series premiered in 2017 and earned critical acclaim for its animation and storytelling. But if you're looking for a new game to play, you're out of luck. And sadly, there's no sign of any new games on the horizon, which is a shame because it's been up to former Castlevania developers to fill in the void left by the series. And it's the closest we'll see to any Castlevania game for the next little while. So while Castlevania may be dormant, its legacy will live on through Bloodstained and games like it for many years to come.